Uh, okay, guys. Uh, today we're going to see um, how we can uh, do some monitoring with SQL Server. Uh, the last uh, demo I did, I set up uh, uh, always on availability group. So um, I kind of had a requirement to somebody to see how can we monitor uh, SQL Server. So what I'm going to do today is uh, let me just quickly open up uh, what we set up last last week on the last video. So um, let me just refresh this. And this was a primary server here, and this is a secondary. And we set up high uh, always on. So from here we could look at our availability group. We could see here that. Uh, we have, we had just one database that was, that was basically streaming. And uh, over here at our standby side or our secondary side, we have our availability group here. Uh, and the same thing, we could see just that one database there. Okay. So everything seems to be, everything should be working fine. Um, if we look at this database, so this is the only database that is in the uh, in our availability group. So we so this dev database is the only one that is uh, streaming right now. So if we look at this database, we see that basically, let's see, we have just two tables in there, and if we go to the standby side, uh, the same thing on the standby side, we should be able to see. Uh, just two tables there as well. So everything is um, streaming. And uh, just to make sure uh, that everything is working fine, um, um, let's just see if we can, just a minute, let's just see if we can get, um, uh, let me just go online and then uh, just get a, a create SQL statement and, um, and load it. Uh, so I just want to get, um, let's say, a create table statement and an insert so that we could just just run that and so that let me just see the site if we can have. A, so okay, let me just create this table employees. This is just to show that uh, to make sure that everything it's it's working well. So. I'm gonna open this database that is streaming here. And uh, I'm going to run that create table statement there. Okay, it runs successfully. So if we refresh this, we should be able to see uh, a new table. So if we look at here, we should be see the new table, the new table we just created. So let's go over to the standby side and uh, we expect to see that same table there immediately. So on the standby here, if we expand this, we should be able to see that table there, good. So this is actually our primary server. If let's go to this, to this to the standby, which is this other server, it's, it's just because I connected uh, both servers there. If we come over here, this is, this is the standby server. So if we look here, we should be able to see it's basically uh, could not obtain information on Windows SM. Uh, mm, let's just reload this. So we should be able to see that um, our new uh, table is there. So. Everything is working fine as far as uh, streaming. It's uh, as far as uh, high availability setup. So everything is working fine. So today we'll kind of try to see how we can monitor this. So one of the tools I'll be using to demonstrate this, and no, this is just a demo. One of the tools I'm going to use to demonstrate how we can monitor about the CPU, the memory, and monitor even some of the the look at the logs, look at explain plan. We can look at uh, the top database, the top queries. We can we can look at a lot of things, and uh, it's uh, this tool called Idera. So 
first this is my primary server and this is my standby here and i have another windows server here this is just a windows 10 box which i which which i have uh, um sql server running there let me just connect to that instance just to make sure everything is working fine so what i want to do is to have that particular tool to monitor all these three instances and we're going to see how we can we can do that so that uh, if in case you have as many instances as you have uh, that tool will be able to monitor all of them so we'll be able to monitor all these three that's just the reason why i added this third one here so uh, let's just connect over to this to this uh, new one. This is just a standalone that I created. It is not part of the availability group. This is just a separate server here. As you see, there's, there's nothing in, inside this server here. So I will try to connect from over here uh, from one of these node, from one of my master node to that particular instance. So let me see. I just make sure that I can I can connect from there. Let's see the IP address of this server in the first place. CMD IP config. So this the IP address here is 170. Okay, that's the IP address. So we'll try to connect. I will I will be on the primary server. Since on the primary, I'm already I've connected. So because on the primary, I have, this is a primary server, so I've connected three of them. So I want to connect the third one, which is that other server. Uh, let me just give that IP address 192.168.91.170. Okay. Um, I don't want to use Windows authentication. Um, Okay, let me create a user over there so that I can use to connect. All right, so let me hop back over here. And uh, let me just quickly create a user here. Let me just create a new login. And uh, it's going to be a SQL Server authentication login. I'm going to call it Prod User. Prod User. And I'm going to give a password for it. Uh, I give a password for it also, and I'm just gonna make it a sysadmin user. I think everything is fine. I don't want it to change that logon. That's fine. So that should be fine. Uh, my user is there. So let's try to use that user to connect right over here. I'm gonna specify SQL Server authentication, and I'm gonna put prod user and uh, I'm going to specify the password, which is then I'm going to try to connect. Hmm. For some reason it looks like it's not. It's taking too long. <clears throat> Should be able to pick that up already. Um, Okay, it's not connecting over there. Let's let's jump back here and figure out why it's not connecting. So, uh, since I created the Windows authentication, what I need to do is let me. I need to make sure that uh, I've enabled Windows authentication for this server. So, I'm going to go to security. So, I'm going to select. So, by default, it's set to Windows. Uh, Windows authentication mode. So I'm going to select SQL Server and Windows. So I'm just going to select this and enter. And it would need to restart for it to take effect. Say yes. And we can just decide to do a restart here. That's fine. Say yes. So do the restart and uh, run the restart. So let it restart now. With that. That should be fine. Okay. Okay. 
start as we started. Let's go back here and see if we can connect. Uh, connect. Hmm. There still seems to be something wrong. Let's see. Okay, uh, it's already taking too long, so I'm not sure it's gonna connect. Okay, see, so let's hop back in over here again and check something. So let's go to the configuration manager. So let's open up configuration manager and uh, let's check something here. First thing I wanna check here if we have TCP enabled under my networks. So it's disabled, so I have to enable this. So I have to enable that. And after enabling again, I need to check the port it's using here. I'll go to addresses and I will have to put here 1433, just the default port here. I'm gonna apply that. And uh, I'm gonna restart the service. This is a service here. I'm gonna click uh, restart the service. Okay, the service is starting. Okay, the service is started. So it's enabled. Let me check, let me look at it again. Um, I'm sure it should be fine now. Um, dynamic port, let me get this. I need to get this out, okay? I don't need that. I just need a port over there. All right, uh, let me just restart the service again. Just make sure everything is fine. Okay, it started. Let me check that again. And uh, I think everything should be fine now. Okay, it looks fine. Okay, let's hop back over there and try to connect again. This time around, I think it should work. Okay, boom. So you see, so that was the issue right there. So now we are able to remotely connect. So we have our three servers all here. This is our primary, which is streaming to this and this. So, all right. So everything is looking okay here. Um, my, my. I don't like the way it's showing up. Let me just hop here for a minute. Okay. Everything should be fine. Okay. I think we should be. I uh, just need to make sure this is green. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So now. What I want to do is that I need to monitor all these servers here, okay? So I use a tool called Edera. So what I'm going to do there is that uh, these are my one, two, three servers. So I will, I'm going to install that tool on, on one of the nodes. So I'm going to install it over here on the dev node. So the beauty with the Edera is that, uh, and you can look that up, right? I think you can, so what I'm doing is I'm just inst I'm just running the installation of uh, just doing a demo of 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 it. Uh, either, uh, yeah, I think it should be either a monitor or something like that. Yeah, so if you can look look that up here. So you can read more about it, and uh, you can download uh, um, a sample. You know. Um, just for a test testing, I think uh, the free version should be able to work with multiple, uh, with like 15 uh, instances. So let's just close that. So what I have here is I have it already downloaded. So this is it here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extract this file. So I'm just gonna extract this file. I'm just gonna extract the file. 
that's the first thing. So uh, if you go to that side, you register and then you can download the test um, um, version of it. And uh, if you like it, you can, you know, I think they will give you a call and then you can, you can go ahead and then uh, uh, maybe your company purchase that and use that. It's, it's really a good tool. So after extraction, you will see this, uh, this executable file here. So note we are installing it on the dev box. So we're going to just run the installation. We're going to run the extraction and installation. So I'm just going to run it. So I'm just say yes. It's just I'm just going to take everything default here at the moment. Um, so it's just going to be a demonstration. I'm not going to go into uh, making or customizing the installation or all of that. So I'm just going to do a default installation. I just want to show you how, how the tool is and how you can get more out of it. So after it's instruct, uh, extracted now, you, it gives you this uh, window where you want to install. So you can want to check, up, check out the installation instruction. If you click on installation instruction, you should be able to open you uh, the site where you can follow up all the instruction you want. But for now, we're not going to go through that. The requirements as well, you click here, it's going to show you uh, the different requirements, how many CPUs, RAMs, and all of that information that uh, you need. Uh, so what I'm just going to do is to run the installation right now. So I click there, I'm going to say yes. I accept the license, I take next. I'm just going to leave everything default the way it is. Say next. And then here I'm going to have to specify the, the service account user because um, 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 you need to be able to validate uh, the credentials of whatever user you're using for this. And note, one thing I want to specify here is that on this particular server, when you install uh, this Edera, it's going to create a database because what happens is that since here, this is our secondary server right now, right? And we, we, we just have uh, just one database here. So it's going to create its own database, which we use as its repository to store information that it gathers from, from all the remote instances. So we need to specify the user here, which you need to log in here as well. So um, let me see which user do I have here? Can I specify? Uh, just hope that I still get the, uh, hold on. Uh, it looks like this server is gonna be kind of creepy slow. I just hope it doesn't it doesn't get too slow on us here. Oh, I want to see something. So I'm just going to log in as the actual administrator here right now. So you, I'm just going to log in as secondary band administrator. So that's I'm just going to use that same account just to log in here. So you're going to specify the domain and the user. So in my, in my case, um, secondary band slash ops uh, trader. Um, let me see, that should be fine administrator, uh, put my password. Let me try to connect. Okay, and if you, if that credential you put there is not correct, uh, it will not, it will not connect. It will not be able to come up to this page until you make sure that those credentials are correct. So this is the name of the database that it is going to install. It is going to create this database, which will be like a repository where it keeps all the information it gathers. So I'm just going to leave it. You can decide to rename the database to put it whatever name you want, but I'm just going to leave it at normal. And it's running locally on this particular instance here. So I'm going to take next. So 
So next, this is just the installation location. Um, it will, if you if you already created a particular location on a disk you want to install it, you can specify that. I'm just gonna leave it at default. Uh, it's gonna tell me the part doesn't exist. Do you want us to create it? I'll say, yeah, they can create that, okay. Now take install. So it's running the installation of, uh, the RSQL. So just gonna give it a little while uh, for that installation to finish. And then when it's finished, we will uh, we'll see the next steps there. Okay. So I think very soon it should be should be true. Um, so I think it should it should be finished in a couple of seconds here. Um, So sometimes the installation can just be based off of your resources, how much resources you have on that particular server. So under normal circumstance, uh, if you're running this on the actual um, environment, what sometimes I will advise is having a dedicated server where you have uh, this data running and collecting statistics and, in, and all your metrics from uh, all the remote servers. So, it's just good to have a dedicated server. But since this is a dev, this is just a test what we are doing here. I'm just installing it on the one of the, I'm installing it on the standby. So I have a always on availability set up on this particular, um, on this particular instance as well. So, so if you're doing it on your, on your end, you might want to make sure you, Maybe you have uh, a particular server to handle that. But it doesn't mean it's kind of really heavy. It's not really heavy. So, okay. So uh, uh, installation is, is done here. So you just, you can just allow it that it should launch it area. You click on finish. So one thing which is good about this tool is that uh, you don't need to install agents on the remote uh, uh, host for it to monitor. So it actually uses, um, uh, I think it's MWI. I think it's, uh, I think it's called Microsoft, uh, something management instrumentation, something like that. Yeah. But, so when it opens up like this, um, oops. Oops, sorry. I think kind of uh, need to get this server, added some resources for this server. It's kind of really slow here. I don't know, maybe it's because I have uh, this setup, but it's, it's, it's kind of a little bit slow. Um, So, okay, let me cancel this. So in order to add servers here, what you can do is um, you can right click on the all servers and then you take manage servers. So this, this is what is going to guide you through uh, 
maybe adding a particular instance for monitoring here. So this dialog box will come up and then you have to click on add. So now I want to add a one instance to be monitored by a data. So click next. So here you can decide on what authentication mode you want to use. If you want to use the normal Windows authentication, you can do that. But I also have a SQL Server authentication, which which I can use. But I'm just going to leave that like that. Then I'm going to choose the server I want to monitor first. Uh, let's first of all start with this uh, server, the main production server. So let's look at the IP address of that production server. I just want to see. So this production server is 150, 91150, okay. So I'm going to hop back over here and I'm going to put that IP address here. 918.192.168.91.150. And I'm going to add. So I'm going to take on next. No valid SQL license is available. Okay, no problem, that's fine. Hmm, this is strange though. Uh, hmm, hold on. Let me see something here. kind of strange here why it's doing this maybe it's because I installed that earlier on I don't know but let me see this should not it should Yeah, it seemed to be like because I surely had it earlier on on this server. That is why. Uh, maybe one nine two dot one six eight dot nine one dot one fifty. Oh, this is weird. Okay, that is that's past that now. So when you text that next thing you have to do is just click on next. And in this way, I will just, I'm just going to enable query monitor so that you monitor the queries, SQL Server up and above. Leave the rest at this. And uh, I'm just going to tell it because what happens is that uh, the SQL Diagnostic Manager uses uh, WMA as the Windows Manager instrumentation to collect information. So um, that is what will, it, and you need to make sure that this WMI is running on the remote node. I'm gonna show you that. So you can click on next, click on the finish. Now we need to test the connection, say test. So if you see a green tick here, and that means it's able to establish connection to that remote server. Sometimes you might see an X here, a red X. It means that it wasn't able to establish connection with the remote server. So it will not be able to collect information. So you need to make sure that, um, um, you know, it's able to connect. So I'm gonna click on apply. And I'm gonna click on okay. So when it does it now, what it's doing is it's actually initializing and it's going to collect both operating system information and database information as well. So it's going to initialize and at this stage, it's also going to create a database on this particular host here and uh, which is going to be like um, its repository where it will store uh, all those information that it collects from the remote server. And from here, it will actually show you the health of that remote server and everything that is going on. So it's kind of still initializing there. Okay, so when this is done, we'll be able to see um, 
you will pull up some uh, information about that particular server um, here, which we can we can uh, we can look at. So when you when it initially just connect, you see it pulls up a lot of information on that server, and uh, this is this is this is this is this information is is being displayed here in real time. So it is pulling out, and it's so nice the way it displays this information. So this is CPU information, the memory information, the network, the disk space, and we're going to see quite a whole lot of it. But first, before we go into looking at more, let's add another server. Let's go ahead and, and add. Uh, okay, before we do that, let me just show you what I was talking about. If we look into this database now, if we refresh the database at the back end, we're going to see that it created a database. And this is a database where it stores all the information it collects. So it creates tables. All these are all information that it gathers and it will populate it inside here. And this is what it uses to display uh, what you see over there in the graph there, all these metrics that you see here. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to um, add another server and uh, we're gonna add, okay, we're gonna take our next. And the server we're gonna add here is gonna be this same host because remember we have we have another server. We have a. We have a. Uh, let me just cancel this for now first. Let me just cancel this first. On this particular host, we have we have servers here, so we have to monitor this instance too as well, even though we have it running here. So what I'm going to do here is I just want to see. I don't remember the IP address of this server. IP config. So this is one fifty six. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, now here I'm just going to add that server. And this is I'm gonna add the next and then go to the next. So I'm gonna one nine two dot one six eight dot nine one dot one five six. I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna take next, next, I'm gonna enable that. Next, and I'm going to go next. And this is loading here. I'm going to go finish. Let me test the connection. So this is what I was talking about. Sometimes when you try to connect and you have this issue here, then something is wrong. Um, you need to figure out what the issue is because it cannot connect to that server. So I'm just going to remove this entry right now. This this is good because we tested it earlier, so we should we should be fine. So um, so we need to figure out what is the issue with this. Let's let's try to add this again. In this case now, let me just try to use um, prod user, and here I'm going to. I think is. I'm going to take a next. I just hope we got this server right. <sighs> Hold on. Uh, I just want to make sure we didn't we didn't get this 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 actual. This is one fifty six. Yes, which is okay. Um, okay. Let's add it back again. Gonna click on add. Take next. I'm going this time around. Let me prod prod user. And the note, the reason I'm I I I'm just using this because I already created um, an application and uh, one of these SQL Server authenticator. This this user here, so I could use that to log in one nine two dot one six eight dot one five six. The next, I'm gonna add the next authentication, click on next. Um, let me try it again and see if it doesn't work, we will try another way, finish, test. So it's still not, 
allowing me to connect on this server. Um, let's try another way out. Um, in that case, let me let me do this on nine two dot one six eight nine one dot one five six. Google next. Okay. So next. Here I'll try to use a different login. I may try to use we we'll try to use the the logging account of uh, this guy is SQL Server. This is secondary band. Let me see. Secondary band slash. I'm gonna try to use the admin here to connect. Administrator. And uh, I'm going to use. I'm gonna click on next, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna test this. Hmm. Something weird is going on here. Okay. Let me remove this, okay. Oh, let's figure out why it's not connecting to this server. Uh, I don't know if the IP address changed, but it shouldn't be an issue since it's the same server I'm using here. Mm, 19156, yes. Oh, mm, what should be the issue here? Let me see, I have a login. Oh. I don't have a login for that user. Okay. Let me let me make sure I have I have everything set up. Okay, it looks good here. I'm gonna create a new login. I'm gonna use SQL Server login. I'm gonna call it prod user. And I'm gonna Okay, so guys, uh, I'm just take, I was just taking this all from scratch. Okay, um, now I have authentication user here. Let me try that again. Let me try to add this, and this time I'm going to use that user. Oh, something I did there. It's gonna ask me for for the pass. <sighs> when I was creating this user, let me delete this user again. Uh, those, I wanted to get rid of the fact that I should change the password during next logon. I didn't want that, I want to uncheck this. Prod user. Uh, and then uh, just make it an admin user. And uh, next, that should be fine. Let me come back here and open this. Let me add here. Let me put prod user. Oops. Prod. Prod user. Um, I think I'm going to take a next. And I'm going to do 192.168.91.156. Connect, go next, go next, 
Max, Max, Max. Um, I'll just leave this again and see if it should give me. A, okay, good. So now we're able to connect. So this is what I was talking about. You need to make sure that you can connect. If you can't connect, it won't be able to pull out information. So at this point, I click apply and I click okay. So it's going to go through its own process of initializing. That's what it's doing right now. And it will collect data as well. So the next thing is we have one more server to add, which is this guy here. So that's just basically how it looks like. You 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 don't need to to kind of install anything on the remote servers. So this server, I just want to see what IP address we have it here. I have config. So this is 170. Yeah, saw that later on anyway. So I'll have to jump back here, and uh, I will need to add that server to as well. So take next, and uh, I think I had prod user over there as well already. Oh, I keep making this mistake. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take next. I'll take one right to that one six. Nine two. One six eight dot nine oh nine one nine one dot one seventy. Click the next, click OK, click enter, enable that, click enter. Yeah, so if I try this and it doesn't work, then we will need to use uh, the other method. Okay, so this works fine, it's connected. Take apply, click yes. Okay, so now we are up and going. So we have these three servers all here. So this one is initializing. So when you see this X here, it doesn't mean it has not connected Windows Server Instrumentation. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. It cannot connect, it's, it's having difficulties to collect information at this point. So for this particular Windows, uh, this other box, is throwing this error because the window, uh, Windows Management Instrumentation Service must be running to collect operating system statistics. So we need to make sure it's running. So that is why over here, it's, 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 uh, it's, it needs to collect some statistics. So let's jump over here. Uh, we just, just need to make sure it's running on that server. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to look at, uh, uh um so let me just see i think it should be services uh it should be components uh component services and i'm gonna click on services here and i'm gonna look for that that windows to make sure if it's running i will just try to restart it or maybe start it again. So we should see it somewhere. Let me. So Windows is called Windows Management. Okay, this is it. Windows Management Instrumentation Service. It shows that it's running. I'm just going to restart the service here. Just make sure everything it's it's fine there. And uh, this management service, I'm gonna start up this service as well. I'm gonna make sure that it's running, it looks okay. Should be fine from this end. And let's jump over here. And uh, I think we're receiving metrics over here now, all right? So we're having some graph here. So now we have three servers. So this is how you can use it to monitor remote servers. So you can see that, um, uh, these are three servers that we're monitoring, okay? So right now, there are a lot of different metrics we can look at here. Some of the events that are going on, we can look at the details, you can look at the log, you can look at the blocking session, and uh, you can look at the queries. But what I'm gonna do here now is that I'm going to 
kind of load some databases so that we can have a, a look at it. So let me jump over here and see if I can restore a database so that we have at least something to look at. I'm gonna, I think I have some backup somewhere. I will just go ahead to restore that. Um, where do I have those backups? I think I have them somewhere, DB, okay. This is cause Circulus uh, backup, the file straw and the pop bed. Circulus file straw pop bed. Because some of these are uh, some custom, I don't want you to, I'm just going to, I'm going to restore them to, to new databases and call them different names, okay? This one, I'm just going to call it, um, let's say, I'm just going to call it my def, my def, uh, analytics. So I'm going to just say yes. And I'm going to create another one again. So I'm going to call this that circles. It's not a must that you must create these databases before you do the restoration, but uh, it's just it's something I just want to do here. Mm. Pod test. It's okay. Uh, for some reason, it looks like this server is slow. Let me see what CPU it, how many CPU it has there. So it has to, let me bump it up a little bit so that we can have some fast storage here. I just want to increase the CPU so that the restore can do a little bit be faster. Just put it to three, three gig, uh, it was two. Just add, add one gig to it after that. I think it should apply that fast. Um, and our product, oh, uh, I just hope, uh, okay. Let me just apply that and it will still need to run again. Okay, I think we should be back up well now. I think it should it should respond well now. Let's see. So yeah, it's applied. So I think this should respond well now. Okay, let's um, let's go ahead and do a restore. All right, let's restore the database. And here I'm going to choose it from a file. I'm gonna add that and uh, I'm going to look where I have those backups. Where are they here? Uh, that is the, this is file store that is gonna go on that one. I say, okay. And uh, I'm going to overwrite because if I don't overwrite, this is going to ask me for the initial um, database that I put there. So I'm going to say yes, that's no backup set selected for hmm. no file groups. No backup set selected. I think I already have this backup selected. So why are you saying that? Mm. Oh, boy.
close to 16. It shouldn't give me this, okay. Let me do it the other way. Let me see what this is gonna give me now. Uh, come on here. Mm -hmm. An exception without executing transaction. Yeah, it looks like there's some something I did there. Um, it looked like the renaming of those backups because I actually had to rename these files. Surely that is the reason why I'm we're having this issue here. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I'm not really going to this. Um, no, no. Close existing connections. Uh, so. Put text on paper for the contrast. <sighs> okay. Mm. It might be something there, but let's let's see over here. I think I have some backups here. Let me see if I do a restore of one over here. How is it going? No backup set selected. Yeah, I want to do it from. I think there should be something um, wrong somewhere, which I have not done here. Um, okay. So, yeah, something is wrong. Um, I needed to see some metrics on this server. I'm not seeing anything yet. So maybe that should be the case. Look like this server needs to connect here. I need to be able to see this server connecting here. One minute, let's, let's look at the component services on the server and try to restart. Let's start those and see if that should. Okay, guys, uh, sorry for that. Sometimes demos can go wrong, you know. You can see a lot of things going on. So uh, let me just restart this guy. Okay. Okay, that's running now. Let's close this. Let's hop back over here. And uh, let's refresh this. Refresh alert, see. Unable to connect, so it's having difficulties. Database master is not backed up, for, so it's it's unable to actually connect. So this server is not connecting. So yeah, this guy is not able to connect. Um, okay, but I'm going to show that up well a little bit. But let me just rush through this and show you guys what this how this tool really works here. 
So, uh, so when you connect, you can choose whatever server you want to use here. So whatever server I want to check the information, I can just do that and I will check the operating system information right here. And then if I note here is actually a real time shows that the information we're seeing here is refreshes. I think it's about like a couple of seconds. So if you want to kind of look at the statistics based on some hours back, you can do that. And you can, but I always just like to use real time, especially if you're monitoring the database as it's running and everything, you wanna use that. You click here on sessions, it gives you some information about the sessions that are connected. And this is just kind of like a graph and uh, it kind of gives you, you can see here the application database extends and a whole lot of information. And uh, one nice thing is that you can, if we had a lot of uh, transactions or a lot of things going on, you will really see a lot of information pulled out here. But you can look at the details and you can actually see which users are connected and to which database they are connected and all of that information and the actual time that they log in, all right? Which is very important. You can look at the logs. So if there are any logs that are going on, or maybe uh, this is uh, the level of the database, you can always see here, we see uh, some kind of share logs there, which get released with part of some time. Okay, so um, you can look at blockings, if there are any blocking the database, but we don't have any blocking sessions right now. So this is kind of good when you're trying to look at what is happening real time in your database. Queries, if you had a lot of queries, if you had queries that running database, since we don't have anything going on here, we should be able to see a couple of queries here and you can look at the queries, you can look at the, at the, at the, at the SQL text, you can see even the explain plan and quite a lot of things. I think I'm going to get another session where I will actually uh, run a lot more information and to show you guys there. Resources, so you can look at, these are some of the, what we saw displayed on the main page over there. Uh, you look at the CPU, you look at the memory, you look at the disk space. The disks you could see if we have uh, like disk size here, you could see uh, if you had here, we have only one disk. If you had five disks, you'd be able to see all of that there. And one cool thing is kind of shows you how that disk has been used and some of the information in that, in that particular disk, right? And then you can look at the file activities. You can see uh, those different ones that are there. You see those are those repository files and all of that information. Okay, um, you can look at procedure cache and uh, those who know SQL, you understand what I'm talking about here. So a lot more cool information on the databases. So it gives you all the database. It will gonna list you the databases that are, on, that are on that particular server. So here we could see that here we have, uh, this is just the main server, uh, our repository server here. If we switch, if we switch over to the other, to the other server, we should be able to see that uh, the database it has there, it has some, I think some other ones there. So we could see the dev, the dev database here, you see the production here. And it gives us a lot of more information about them, the table indeed, and it shows you their recovery model. So if you just wanna see the local recovery model, uh, just by a glance, you can see that the table size and all of that information. One cool thing there is also tells you when last it was backed up, because that sometimes that you're doing a backup, you wanna see, when last that database was back up. So it's also good. You can see that from there too as well. Okay, availability groups. You have availability groups. Now, not we, we had availability groups, right? So because of that, it will show us information. And this is this is really cool. So you can really monitor all of this from here and you can see exactly what is going on here and if, if, if it is healthy or not. So you can, if it's synchronous or asynchronous and all of that information. So you can look at the temp file users too as well. If you can look at the configurations that are there, you can look at the files, 
can look at backups, you can look at tables and indexings, and there's quite a whole lot of information that this, you can, it really pulls up a whole lot of information and you can't really digest all of this in a day. So it's a whole lot of information there. Services, it's good because you might want to see which services are running and which services are stopped. Naturally, it should pull up a good graph down here. It should be able to, maybe it's still loading, but it should load some info. Okay, good, here it is. So uh, you could see just from a glance that it tells you which one is running, which one has failed and all of that, as you could see here. Logs, as a database administrator, you wanna see the different logs that are going on. So these are all logs that are being generated and you can just, by scrolling down, you can easily uh, pick up which one are the errors and you can find out what is going there. So it kind of really, brings everything on the on a particular platform that you can just monitor at the same time you don't need to go back and forth and all of that uh report this is one of my favorite so you want to generate reports on the particular server right so sometimes you want to just look at all the servers if i click here and i decide to run report on all the servers i just say run run report it will generate me the report so Basically, I have just three servers here right now, and uh, it will show what is critical, what is running, and all of that information. So we could see here that for 117, as we saw that it couldn't connect, that is why you see the last collection, it can't give us any last collection date and time because it could not connect to that server, all right? So, and uh, you see, it tells you that it's running the agent on those nodes are running and all of that information. So if you want to look at the server summary too as well, you can decide to say, okay, which server do I want to see? If it's the main server, you can decide to run report and select the time that you want for that report. So it kind of generates a report on that particular server and a whole lot of information there. We don't have much activity going on, so we won't be able to really see as much information as, as we can. There are a whole lot of matrices that we can actually pull out here from the report, you know, and you can actually have a, a wide view about it. Now let's jump over to databases here. If you want to look at the top database, database statistics, let me just pull this up. You can look at database statistics. You choose a server. Let's say we choose this server to so look at database statistics. You can decide to select what database that we want. Um, uh, we don't have anything run. Let's just take the normal database that it is monitoring and run a report on it. So we could see uh, it will give you some information about that database and a whole lot as well. Okay, um, top application, um, mirroring, mirroring history, and there's just a whole lot of information you can generate reports from here. Top database, you want to see which are the top database that are being con that are consuming here. You can you can decide to run that and it's going to pull out which are the top. If this was really busy, you would have really seen quite a whole lot of information here. You know. So alerts, you might want to see some of the alerts that get generated for that server. You know, you catch your attention and you want to kind of uh, go through them and look at what 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 is it, you know, administration, the other stuff. But this is just basically uh, what this tool is. It's really good and uh, I will kind of still uh, create another a session where I will show you the actual good, um, show you a lot of activities that are going on. I will try to load that and then I will share with you. But I hope this helps you to understand basic configuration and basic monitoring of that particular tool. All right, thanks.